Welcome back. My name is Kevin Tokoff on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to discuss telomeres and telomerase, some of the basic physiology and mechanisms, and we also are going to go into a little bit of medical implications at the tail end of this video. First, let's talk about the telomere shortening mechanism. So what is a telomere? Well, the genomic DNA of humans and all other eukaryotes is linear. That just means that our molecules of DNA they're not circular, they're lines, okay? They have two ends. These two ends of each chromosome contain about 100 to 1,000 repetitions of the approximate base sequence T, T, A, G, G, G. So that sequence just repeats hundreds and hundreds of times. These sequence repeats are termed telomeres, and they occur on the ends of each chromosome, okay? And these telomeres are ribonuclear protein complexes that shorten with each round of DNA replication. And the telomeres cap and are supposed to protect the internal parts of the DNA of the chromosome. Okay, so the basic idea is that with each round of DNA replication, the telomere, or the end of the chromosome, shortens a little bit each time. Okay, now... During DNA replication of the lagging strand of DNA, so if you need information on lagging versus leading strand in DNA replication, I have a video on that. I'll post a link to it in the description of this video. But during lagging strand replication, primers of Okazaki fragments are easily made with DNA primase. And the DNA fragments are joined via the action of DNA ligase. When the DNA polymerase complex reaches the chromosome end, the end of the telomere does not hybridize to an Okazaki fragment because the primer extends over the end of the chromosome. Now, to give you an example of that, right here I have a primer, okay? Now this blue part, this is the actual uh, DNA, and these red things are the Okazaki fragments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of these. I'm going to put it right where it belongs here on the DNA. And you see how this red part, it extends over the end of the chromosome. So it turns out that the DNA will actually shorten by this much. The telomere will shorten by this much because you can't actually... Um, you can't actually turn this primer into DNA because it extends over the edge of the chromosome. So whatever blue part was occupied by that fragment, it's going to be gone, basically. Okay, And so it shortens by that much. Now, the last primer normally terminates between 70 and 100 bases prior to the terminus. So most likely this part right here would be about 70 to 100 base pairs, okay? Th thus, this primer is not added, and the terminal parts of both chromosome ends become unoccupied by the primers, and so then when the DNA is replicated, it shortens, okay? Now, if you eventually got to a point theoretically where the entire telomere was completely eliminated, so because the chromosome shortens with each round of replication, if you didn't have the non-coding telomeres because you had so many rounds of replication, then you would start eating up uh, coding parts of the internal part of the chromosome, and that would lead to, of course, massive problems. And so eventually, if you have too much shortening, um, the cell becomes senescent and it will eventually die. Okay. Now, we'll mention at the end of this video that there's an enzyme that some cells can use called telomerase, which actually performs the opposite action, and we'll actually see this part later. It actually, in some ways, lengthens the telomere and slows this process down. There's a lot of environmental factors um, and other factors as well that affect telomere shortening. So, generally speaking, we're not going to be able to just preserve the length of the telomere forever. And we're not going to be able to have a net lengthening of it. But we can actually slow the shortening down. We can slow its rate of shortening. This table right here, provide, or this figure, provides some factors that um, either cause shortening or, or stop the shortening. So for example, DNA damage by any source is going to cause more telomere shortening. Okay, And here in this figure, you can see a lot of uh, different... Uh, factors that can cause DNA damage. For example, ultraviolet light, spending too much time in the sun. If you spend too much time in the sun, the high energy radiation will activate molecular oxygen, 
forming singlet oxygen, which actually can react with DNA and proteins and damage those, causing mutation. Um, air pollution, there's a lot of toxins in the air that we breathe. Um, for example, it's a known fact that somebody who goes and runs on a track inside for one hour, so in a gym in a track, inside for one hour, is going to require less vitamin C than somebody who runs for an hour outside where you're exposed to car exhaust. So car exhaust is an example of a pollutant, and it would be known to be inflammatory, which is why if you run outside, you need more vitamin C than someone who runs inside where you don't have that pollution. Also, ionizing radiation, smoking is a big one. Smoking, that's why people that smoke often look older. Um, that's, not, that's not just some old wives' tale. It's a fact. It's because, partly because the smoking is damaging the DNA, it's shortening the telomeres, etc., so it causes that aging appearance. And there's also byproducts of metabolism, such as free radicals, reactive oxidative species, which also begs the factor that you need antioxidants and so forth in your diet. And just generally inflammation of any kind. Inflammation we know produces uh, free radicals, and if you don't have enough anti-inflammatory agents such as omega-3s in your diet, then you will have excess inflammation and that can lead to telomere shortening. Okay, And inflammation and, and DNA damage are somewhat intertwined. Okay, It's also established that mental uh, statuses such as stress, anxiety, these factors can also shorten your telomeres, which is another um, reason why you should de-stress at the end of the day and not take on too much. Now, in general, when we think of telomere shortening, the main two things, because most things can fall within these factors in some way, is we need to think of stress and inflammation. Okay. Now, inflammation you should mainly think of as being caused by for the most part, dietary factors. Um, in the Western society, we um, the standard American diet is really, really bad. Um, it's hugely inflammatory, and it is not high enough generally in vital nutrients, um, micronutrients such as vitamins and minerals, and then it also is not high in anti-inflammatory agents such as omega-3 fatty acids like DHA. This is a table right here, a figure I should say, that tells you things that, that activate telomerase activity versus the opposite shortening of the telomeres. And you can see some factors here. For example, vitamins A and D, those are two fat soluble vitamins, and fiber will actually slow down inflammation. They will actually inhibit inflammation and reverse it actually, which actually prevents shortening of the telomeres. In addition, omega-3 fatty acids such as DHA, along with some vegetable and, uh, and plant-related compounds, polyphenols, curcumin, um, these are, are potent antioxidants, and antioxidants inhibit and reverse oxidative stress. They inhibit and reverse inflammation, which both of those in turn um, prevent shortening of the telomeres. In addition, you can make the same arguments for vitamin C and E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant along with vitamin C. Vitamin C mainly acts in the blood, though. Okay? Now, other nutrients which tend to be deficient in American diets include things like folate. Folate is involved in being processed to tetrahydrofolate and ultimately to methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is involved in DNA methylation indirectly. And if you have good enough methyl methylation of your DNA, then you have the ability to regulate the telomere length and that actually slows down its shortening. Other nutrients like zinc, zinc activates telomerase activity, which will help to prevent your telomeres from shortening too much. And then you can see other uh, minerals such as magnesium. Magnesium slows down DNA damage because DNA has to have magnesium to function. In addition, magnesium is a cofactor for DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase. Zinc is actually a cofactor for RNA polymerase as well. But the main idea here is that we have a lot of dietary factors that play a role in either promoting telomerase activity or telomerase length regulation, which both of those are going to prevent the telomeres from shortening as much, and then other factors which would cause the telomeres to shorten.
So if you don't have adequate amounts of any of these things in your diet, in particular the antioxidants, which are very important, then you're going to have more chronic systemic inflammation, you're going to have more DNA damage, more oxidative stress, and all of those things cause shortening of telomeres, and there's plenty of evidence to support that. Um, in general, society today is arguably more stressful than it was 500 to 1,000 years ago. You could make the argument that perhaps um, a thousand years ago, if you've ever read stories like Beowulf, um, obviously that's a fictional story, but they describe the time as being very warlike. You had to look out for yourself because there were tribes and they attacked each other. But that's not the kind of stress we're talking about. We're talking about stress related to work, where people have deadlines and tons and tons and tons of stuff. Um, you have people in college, you may be in college watching this video, you've got deadlines there, work to do, jobs, tests, exams, etc. I don't think it's any surprise that society is more stressful than it was 500 to 1,000 years ago, okay? But it is very important to reduce stress because stress causes shortening of your telomeres, um, probably in some of the same ways that diet does. Stress will increase your, uh, it increases oxidative stress, but it also can increase inflammation, believe it or not. Now, there are several ways that I would recommend to combat stress, and uh, these some of these might be a little bit unorthodox, although this first one is not. Adequate sleep. That is one thing that the vast majority of people, particularly in college, do not get enough of. Sleep is very important. There are some people that, and I've heard studies like this where they've said, we don't know why we sleep. Well, it doesn't matter that we don't know why it's necessary. The fact is it is necessary. And sleep is when a lot of times, in layman terms, when your body recovers from the day. If you don't get enough sleep, you're going to be more stressed the next day. You're going to have more inflammation the next day. And it works in sort of a vicious cycle. You need to get adequate sleep. Something that will actually help you sleep, but also in, in a way prevents inflammation and it stops stress is exercise. Um, in fact, some, and you don't have to be overboard with this by any means, but high intensity exercise has been shown to reduce stress and it's also been directly shown to prevent as much loss of the telomeres over time. So exercise is very important. I don't have it here, but also diet is very important, which we'll come to in a minute down here at the bottom. Another kind of therapy that you may not have heard of is theta wave ther therapy. Theta wave therapy, are, you can find these videos on YouTube. I actually have some on my channel. I'll put some links to them in the description below. And in, in, in a sense, what theta waves are is they're just almost nonsensical sounds that are very relaxing. Um, they're just, it's just a sound. It's very difficult to describe, but they're in the four to seven hertz range. And you just kind of listen to them and, and they just they actually do relax you. They trick your brain into going into a slower frequency um, neural activity and that actually it's mimicry basically, but it causes your brain to relax a little bit and I've actually had success with that. Um, something I do not have on my channel, but it does is on plenty of other channels, is ASMR. Autonomic Sensory Meridian Response. And this is actually something that some people have found very relaxing. Um, there's sort of a classic definition of ASMR. You basically get these tingly feelings running down your head and your back when you listen to certain sounds. Um, not everybody has that sensitivity, but that doesn't take away from the fact that ASMR is generally very relaxing. And I highly recommend you go look at some of those channels. And this last one might surprise you. Um, but I actually recommend this, um, alcohol in moderation. Yes, and I'm not just talking about cheap, sugary beers. I'm not talking about beers. There actually is some truth to if you drink uh, drinks like wh whiskey in moderation, it's actually very good for you. It's very relaxing. Um, it's certainly better than just popping a benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepines are prescription medications. Um, whiskey, in particular, has a lot of antibacterial molecules in it, antifungals, and antioxidants. And so, obviously, you shouldn't do this, you know, drink, you know, an entire bottle of Jack Daniels in one night, every night. But certainly, drinking in moderation actually can be very therapeutic. Um, 
In addition, other alcohols such as wine um, have molecules such as resveratrol and other polyphenols that actually also act as antioxidants and they are exceptionally relaxing, particularly after a stressful day. In fact, I would say, in general, drinking stuff like that is actually superior to just taking a sleeping pill. Okay? Sleeping pills also have a high risk of tolerance and addiction. And finally, inflammation. We should mostly think of being caused by the diet. There are other factors, but here's one example. One study actually looked at the amount of omega-3 fatty acids that were taken in. I have a whole playlist on omega-3 fatty acids. To put it simply, fatty acids like DHA and EPA are strongly anti-inflammatory, particularly DHA. And I highly recommend taking a DHA supplement. They're very beneficial to promoting anti-inflammation. But what they found is that the amount of DHA that was taken was inversely proportional to, to the shortening of the telomeres. In other words, what they found is the more DHA and omega-3s that you took, the slower your telomeres were shortening which makes sense given what we've already talked about. You don't want inflammation because inflammation causes your telomeres to shorten more quickly. Anti-inflammatories such as omega-3s, DHA, some of these vitamins such as vitamin C, A and D, and so on and so forth, they will actually slow the shortening of your telomeres. Okay? And last but not least, um, we actually will talk about telomerase um, I actually hinted this in a previous slide that actually some of these can, vital nutrients can activate telomerase activity. To put it simply, telomerase will actually use an RNA template that is distinct from this one up here. Remember how if you don't have telomerase active at that point, you have this RNA primer this, that is going to overhang over the end of the edge of the chromosome, and that can't be, so rather this whole part of the DNA essentially just doesn't get replicated, so you get shortening. Well, what telomerase can do is it's going to use an RNA template that effectively just lengthens the end of the chromosome, and so now this, it wouldn't fit here, but it'll fit down here, and it prevents the DNA from shortening as much. And so there are factors they have shown, such as what we just saw, that can actually activate telomerase, which also helps slow the shortening of the telomeres. Okay, now... Telomerase, like we just mentioned, is an RNA-dependent DNA polymerase. It uses RNA primers, which it makes itself, to extend the ends of chromosomes, which counters telomere loss associated with DNA replication. Okay, so the whole point of this is if you want to prevent telomere loss, you don't want to age as much, you want to have a healthy life, combat your stress and combat your inflammation and hopefully follow some of these rules and I think you'll find your life actually is more quality. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.